الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبی وسلم اما بعد حبت فلا نو ڈاؤٹ دس لائف از ڈسیپٹو And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes us and gives us many favors to see how we're going to behave in this dunya. Are we going to be a source of good? Are we going to be a source of khair? Or are we going to be a source of wickedness and misguidance and deviance and evil? And in a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Inna dunya halawat al-khadra Wa inna allaha mustakhlafukum fi Fil yandur kayfa ta'maloon Fattaqu al-dunya fattaqu al-nisa Fina awla fitna bani Israel Kanat fi nisa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Verily This life In the dunya halawat al-khadra Verily This life or this world Is like a beautiful garden Or Beautiful greenery And of course if something is beautified for us That means we're attracted to it Of course, we're attracted to what? We're attracted to the dunya. We're attracted to nice clothes. We're attracted to nice cars. We're attracted to nice homes. We all want stability. We all want economic self-sufficiency. We all want this. We want that. We want beautiful wives. We want beautiful husbands, handsome husbands for those who want the husbands, meaning the women. And otherwise, in the dunya, halawat al-khadra. So the, the world, is, it's beautiful. It's got all kind of things to distract you. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِي And verily Allah establishes you in it. Allah has established us in this dunya. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِي فَلْيَنْذُرْ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ فَلْيَنْذُرْ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ He looks to see what you're going to do <coughs> in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in the world with all these beautiful distractions and these glitter, these things that are going to distract us, that are going to tempt us, that are going to uh, uh, possibly misguide us. And he looks to see what you're going to do. For the under kayf Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he, he gave us the prophetic command and, and prophetic advice صلى الله عليه وسلم he said فتقوا الدنيا فتقوا الدنيا فتقوا الدنيا وتقوا النساء he said so fear the dunya so we got to fear that we got to we got to fear that meaning we don't we don't indulge in it to the extent that it consumes our heart and that we have to be cautious of its distractions of those things in it that are so beautified that will take us away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا Fear the dunya. فَتَّقُوا النِّسَا And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, And fear the women. فَتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا فَتَّقُوا النِّسَا فَإِنَّ أَوَلَ فِتْنَ بَانِ إِسْرَائِلْ كَانَ فِي النِّسَا Because very the first fitna that befell the children of Israel was the women. Now let's look at this, Ahabati Filah, let's put it in context to see how this relates to our various uh, tri trials and tribulations. So many, as men, there is hardly a thing more harmful to our hearts than the women. That when we are distracted by women and all the things related to that, the, the sexual attraction and everything else, there's nothing greater that can knock a man right out the box. Bowl him over. Smash him. And destroy any potential greatness that he had. It can come through the fitting of the women. Doesn't mean women are evil, no. But it means that is the means. That is the thing that was most beloved and most coveted to us as men. 
And for some it's wealth. And that's why the Prophet said, Fear the dunya, fear this dunya what could distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَتَقُنِسَى and fear the women. Don't, don't, don't get distracted and tempted and destroyed by the women. Women, excuse me. Because, and then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will Now, I saw something today which was very interesting. This was a clip and it was in Egypt. And it shows, of course, the stereotype of a lot of the Arab men, which is men in general, but you know, they have their own issues in many of the Arab countries for various reasons we're not going to get into. And this was in Egypt. And the situation of Habitifila was that there were some Egyptian girls wearing miniskirts, okay, which is away from their culture. The men hounded them like a pack of wild dogs. And I'm not talking about five or ten, I'm talking it was an army. It's like a mosh pit, for those who know about slam dances. It was like an army of, of Egyptian men grabbing, grasping, groping, everything. And the women were screaming and, you know, you know, just in a bad situation. And so the people were advertising to say, say, look at these animals. They can't handle the beauty of, you know, women uh, being liberated and expressing themselves. But I'm going to tell you something, when you think of common sense... And then, of course, Islamically. Islamically, we know it's impermissible. They were, their hair, long hair, trying to be like models, mini skirts, in Egypt, okay? Supposedly Muslim women, I, I'm assuming. And we know that that's completely muharram. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't think anybody's going to debate about that, except for the bal mudil, or someone who is just on straight kofr. They just, you know, they just reject Islam and everything Islam comes with. Okay. So, we have these people, these women want to express themselves. You know, they're influenced by everything that they're influenced by. So they wanted to show their beauty, not just by, just by a little bit of open of eye. We're not saying that. These women were wearing miniskirts in Egypt. And the Egyptian men, they were all in the wrong as well. Hounding the women. That's not permissible neither. Really, the Muslim, his job is to lower his gaze. But we know the reality of human beings. So, what I, the reason I wanted to point this out of Habit Tefillah is that from the point of common sense, let's, let's give you an example. I'm a black man from America. If I were to go to certain places in America, I have that right. That's my right. I should be able to go anywhere I want in America. But that's not the reality. I'm not going to go into an all-white redneck neighborhood or, or redneck province or a, a state or what have you. It's known for lynching, known for this, known for that. No. That's from common sense. Likewise, the women trying to express themselves with Muharramat, that's not permissible. Nor is that from logic. Oh, we just wanted all the men to really not pay attention. We just wanted to express it our nakedness. Come on. You, you're in Egypt, you're in a Muslim land. So it shows that there's a lack of intellect and it makes no sense on a variety of levels, even though the people of so supposed enlightenment oppose that from ignorance. It's, there's nothing enlightened about that. It rejects common sense for human beings. That you don't put yourself in a situation like that. Doesn't mean it's justified. They're not justified to attack and a grope and do all this evil. That's evil. But do but let's use common sense. What are you gonna expect? Do you expect that they're just gonna roll out the red carpet and just, you know, it's all good. Oh, sister, you're expressing yourself. That's great. No, that's not how it works in the world, in the nature of human beings. And we ask all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kufr, shirk, and nifaq, and ilhad, and the fitna of the various trials and tribulations that were affected by Ahabatullah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam